Hey everyone, how you doing? It's Man Joe, and today we're going to review the Heat Vape Invader Mini. This is a 50 watt temperature control device that is waterproof and shockproof. So let's get into it. Now there are a ton of temperature limiting or temperature control devices, whatever you want to call it, coming out on the market today. Uh, it is absolutely the wave of the future and the e-cig companies are all trying to cash in on it. You're seeing all different types of temperature control devices from 40 watt mods all the way up to there's a 200 watt temperature control device coming out now. And there's a lot of differences between them, but there's also a lot of similarities. Today we're going to take a look at the Heat Vape Invader Mini. Now this temperature limiting device is a little bit different than a lot of the other ones that you've seen and that's because this has an IPX4 waterproof rating. That's right. This is a waterproof shockproof mod. Now I'm not going to do these drastic tests but if you do a search on YouTube you will find people who are running them over with cars, jumping into swimming pools, dropping them off of roofs and they still work. This is a phenomenal device. It is extremely accurate and it works very well and now if you're an out and about person if maybe you spend a lot of time out of your house or out of the office or maybe you work in construction or if you're like me or own a landscaping business you know some type of thing where you don't necessarily want to take your good expensive mod like your SX Mini M class or something like that to work because you're gonna get it ruined this is a great device and you should definitely take a closer look at it but I have to tell you this works better than a lot of my other temperature limiting devices it's extremely accurate and it gives a phenomenal vape. Now I'm currently running this thing. I have this with a 0.11 ohm coil, dual coil. This is on the Epoch D1 from ePro and we're gonna take a look at this in another video. Uh, it's uh, 23 watts at 430 degrees and take a look at the vapor on this thing. It works really well and it's extremely consistent. I'm really loving this device and it's become my go-to device when I leave the house so that I don't ruin a lot of my other mods. Now, I received this from a company called OriginVape.com. I was really looking to get one, uh, but I found out there are actually two different models of the Heat Vape Invader Mini on the market right now. Uh, there's the version one and the version two. This is the version two, and you'll know the difference by the packaging. Uh, the version one, you can see up here on the screen, this is a, a picture of the box that the version one comes in. Uh, they're very similar, uh, but the version one, after uh, 50 minutes, it would turn itself off and it would lose any of the settings that you have in it. The version 2 turns itself off after an hour to help preserve battery life, but it doesn't lose any of the settings. So that's something very important you need to take into account if you're looking for this. Uh, but uh, Origin Vape, I called them up, I sent them an email, and I really wanted to make sure that I was going to be able to get the version 2, and they were a phenomenal company to deal with. They answered me back right away, told me, yes, we have the version 2 in the blue one and the black one, uh, but we, they didn't have the version 2 in, I think it was the silver one or the gray one. And uh, I was able to order it from right away, and they even gave me a discount coupon to use with it. Uh, shipped it out right away, so definitely a great company to deal with. I'll leave a link down in the description, and they're currently selling the Heat Vape Invader Mini for $59.99. So it's a great price for an awesome 50-watt mod. Now, so before we get into the up close and personal, let's take a look at some of the specs on this thing. Like I said, it is made by Heat Vape. It is a 50-watt uh, temperature limiting device goes from 200 degrees up to 600 degrees. Uh, it takes a single 18650 battery. Uh, when you are in temperature control or temperature limiting mode, uh, it can read a coil down to 0.1 ohms up to 1 ohm. Now, I have been able to fire coils on this uh, at about a 0.8 ohm, but nothing lower than that. Um, I have been haven't been able to fire a 0.6 or a 0.7 ohm. So if you're like me, maybe you have several temperature limiting devices um, with maybe like a dual coil 0.6 ohm build for like an SX Mini M class or something like that, you're not going to be able to fire those coils on this device so my suggestion would be if again if you're like me and you're an out and about person don't want to ruin your good mod pick yourself up a cheap rta or rba this way you don't have to worry about breaking that either like i've got this epoch d1 um and this way you can build like a 0.1 ohm coil on it not have to worry about that if it breaks as well as your mod breaking uh, when you are in canthal mode it fires from a 0.16 ohm up to a 2 ohm 
It has a power output of a 1 watt to 50 watt, both in canthal mode and in temperature control mode. Uh, it is, like I said, virtually indestructible. Uh, it comes with a three month warranty from Heat Vape. It has an integrated silicone sleeve, which we'll see when we get into the up close and personal. It's made out of zinc alloy and brass. And the screen is very similar to the DNA 30 device. And like I said, the chip inside operates very similar to the DNA 40 uh, from Evolve. So let's take a vape here, then we'll dive down and get into the up close and personal. Okay, so this is the box that the Heat Vape Invader Mini comes in. And again, this is the version 2. Up here on the screen, you can see this is a picture of the version 1 box. You're going to know the difference by the packaging. So version 2 comes with this black piece around it. Version 1 is the white box. So we'll, we'll take a look at the box over here on the side. It says Heat Vape Invader Mini, 60, 600 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 watt temperature control, water resistant, shock proof. Uh, on the back, on the other side, we have a little QR code. On the back, we have some more product information, specifications. Uh, we'll take that off. We'll open this up. Very simple packaging. Open it up. Take out your mod. That's it. Down below here, you just have a little set of instructions here. Not much to it. No charging cable, anything like that. Okay, so taking a little bit closer look at the device. First of all, it is made out of silicone. Like I said, this screen is very similar to the DNA 30 down here on the bottom. It says Heat Vape Invader Mini. This is my only one. I do have a couple of scratches on the uh, end cap there, but you can see there it says uh, Designed by Heat Vape. Uh, very easy to kind of grab. It's got a knurled side for your battery. I do have a battery in here, but I'll just take it out here. So you just unscrew that like that. Slide your battery out. Slides right back in. And just kind of, I again, always go backwards. And if you do look at, before I put that back on, you do see an O-ring there to help seal it. And this is spring-loaded for a better connection. And then all we do is screw this back on. Once in a while, I have a little bit of harder time catching the threads. But that's just because of, it, it is a, a spring on the bottom there. But usually not a big deal. Just kind of screw it back on. Uh, taking a look at the rest of it, there are two screws here for the silicone. Um, you have an up and down button here. You have your fire button is right here. So you have a lot of different pieces here for your design. Uh, this one here with like the arrow on it, that's your fire button. Now up here on the top, one thing you're going to notice right away is we do not have a spring-loaded pin. This is not spring-loaded. It is a solid pin. Uh, now they're doing that to help maintain uh, the waterproofness of this device. Now instead, what we're going to do, if we take this, I have this Goliath uh, cologne, uh, which I'll be doing a review on. When we screw this on, you're going to see we don't have a uh, nice smooth connection there. So instead, what you're going to do is you're going to just simply grab this ring up here on the top. You're going to turn it, turn your device back down just like that. And now you have a nice smooth connection. Now, one thing I'm not a big fan of just for aesthetics look is the way they've now like they've kind of contoured this in a little bit so this is only like 21 millimeters whereas most of our devices are 22 so you have that kind of like little piece that comes like that uh, but not a big deal all of my atomizers do fit on this um, I personally do not mind this design some people may mind this design we'll take that off there and you can see there is our 510 pin three screws that hold that connection on there and again you just pull that on there like that and it comes up and adjusts to any of your devices. Okay, so getting into the screen here, like I said, we have our fire button right here. It's going to be very similar to the DNA 40. Uh, it's going to be five clicks to turn it on. So one, two, three, four, five. Comes up, it says, hello, Invader Mini. We see our wattage there, our temperature, and our battery. The battery bar seems to be very consistent, works very well. Now, anytime you take an atomizer off, turn it back on, you're going to get that same thing. We'll press the fire button. It's going to say new coil, up or down. Uh, you can see that our uh, up and down buttons are marked. You have a negative and a plus. So we're going to hit our uh, plus button for it's a new coil. And now you can see there, I know the screen's a little blurry. It says a 0.08 ohms. Um, I have had no issues firing this. You can see it does fire. When you fire, the screen brightens up. And almost immediately dims down so uh, but I've had no issues firing a 0.08 ohm I have not been able to fire anything really lower than that 
Uh, now to get into our temperature control mode, very similar to the DNA 40, five clicks, turn it off, one, two, three, four, five. Now it says locked, okay? And then all we're going to do is hold the up and down button at the same time. It says hold to change temperature, and now we can change our temperature. Uh, if we hit the negative button, we're gonna go all the way down. It's gonna go to 200 degrees. Uh, it does not scroll super fast, and there is no Celsius mode on this. So 200 degrees, and it does not round robin. To go up, we're gonna go all the way up. And again, this is as fast as it goes. So it does take a little bit longer. I wish that scrolling was just a little bit faster. And we got 600 and then one more and it turns off the temperature control. We'll go back down to 430 degrees. Okay, so now while you are locked, if you, let me focus in on this a little bit more. While you are locked, if you press the fire button and the up button and then and the uh, negative button, fire button and the negative button, you're gonna go into your stealth mode and your normal mode. You hold it, normal mode, stealth mode, and now your screen won't light up. Just got clocked, okay? Now if you hit your fire button and your negative again, we'll go into our normal mode normal mode okay if we hit our fire button and our down button we'll go into left mode and then right mode so you have left mode keep holding it it'll switch to right mode press it again and we'll go back to our right mode and then it's going to go to switch to left mode okay taking it back out of being locked if we hit our up and down button at the same time when it's unlocked we will lock in our wattage settings. So now if I press the up button or down button, it says power locked, power up and down, press up and down. Uh, there is no way to lock in your resistance similar to the SX Mini or any of your uh, newer DNA 40 devices. So you can't lock in your resistance. All it does is lock in your wattage. So something very unique about this device, if you wanna turn it off completely, not just lock the fire button, uh, you're going to press the up and down button five times at the same time and I'm going to turn it like this so I can hit it with my thumbs and you're just going to go again five times one two three four five and it's going to say bye bye and now the device is completely turned off. Now one thing about this device if you leave it with an atomizer on it if you if so if you have it on we'll turn it back on we have it back on if I turn this back on okay and I do not have an atomizer and, and I do have an atomizer, I'm sorry. If I turn it on and I have an atomizer, after one hour, this device will completely shut down. So it's gonna just shut down anytime you have an atomizer on it and you don't fire for one hour. Now also, every time you turn it back off and on, it is going to ask you if you have a new coil or the same coil. So again, we're gonna just say we have the same coil here. So we'll hit the negative button, 0.08 ohm. So again, if you fire, if you have it, you use it, and then you put it down, you don't use it for another hour, and you leave your atomizer on it, it will turn off after one hour. Now, the Heat Vape Invader Mini version 2 will retain all of these settings. So it will come back at, you know, 10 watts. It'll come back with 390 degrees, whatever I have set on it. Um, if you have the version 1 and the, and the device turns itself off, you're going to come back and not have any of your settings there. So it's very important to note. That's the biggest difference between the version 1 and the version 2. But overall, that's how it works. It's the same thing you can have if you want to run it in canthal mode. It will automatically detect whether it's got a canthal coil or it's got a nickel coil, or you can go into your menu and turn it off. Uh, but again, very similar to the DNA 40. Uh, so let's take this back up to uh, regular FaceTime. We will take a vape on it and we'll talk about the pros and the cons. So that's the up close and personal for the Heat Vape Invader Mini. And like I said, it's a very well built device. It's extremely durable, which you can see in those pictures. Uh, built very well and it feels really good in your hand. Uh, very reminiscent to me of a tube mod. Uh, some people may call this a tube mod. Others are gonna call it a box mod. I kind of say it's like a hybrid. It's, it's like halfway between the two. You know, it is a little rectangular in design because of this rubber on the front, uh, but it fits in your hand like a tube mod. So it's kind of like, you know, a little bit of each 
each one. Uh, I really enjoy the design. Everything, just the way my hand wraps around it, the way my finger rests on the fire button, great design to it. So let's take a vape here, then we'll get into the pros and cons of the device. I said very consistent never get a dry hit and i always get a good hit with this device you know it, it it's not like the dna 40 chip where you have one minute where you get a really good vape and then the next one is like yeah so so you know and that's again because of the refinement issue where it's always trying to do that refinement with the atomizer you don't have that with this device it's just always consistent you know you put your you know you put your atomizer on there and every single time you change that atomizer take it off it's going to give you that is this a new coil or an old coil and I've never had an issue with any kind of refinement or anything like that it really works well uh, let's take one more vape and then we'll do, get into it this epoch d1 really gives you phenomenal flavor and phenomenal vapor i really enjoy this device there are a few negatives in it which you'll see when i do my review video on that but overall this is a great device especially for an inexpensive rba uh, so let's talk about the pros and cons we'll start off with the cons uh pretty much all of my cons are subjective uh most of them i don't mind at all but you may mind that's why i've decided to include them in cons because it's something that you may have to take into consideration if you're going to purchase one of these uh the first one's going to be the fact that there is no spring loaded uh, center pin on the top uh, and now again I personally like this design uh, the way this turns like this uh, all of my atomizers fit flush on it fit very well uh, you got to remember they're not putting that center pin spring loaded uh, to keep the integrity for waterproofing it if you put it if you put a spring loaded pin there it would have a way for water to get in there uh, but not having it also gives you a much better conductivity between your battery your pin and your atomizer so it's a pro and it's a con just depends on what you like. Again, I've had no issues. Everything sits very flush on it. Uh, my next con, subjective con again, is that there's no onboard uh, charging. I, and again, they're doing that because of the waterproof. If you had an onboard charger, it would be a place for the water to get in, uh, be, but it doesn't have that. But this device has is very easy to change the battery. No issues with the battery cap. Comes on and off very simply, unlike the SX Mini. Uh, now, my next con is is probably not a subjective con, um, and that's that there is no way to, it's not user upgradable firmware. Now, again, that's because you can't put a USB port on there and then keep the IPX4 waterproof rating, uh, but it kind of sucks that there's no way to upgrade, you know, your firmware on there. And I'm not sure whether or not heat vape has like a way you can send it in or anything like that, but do keep in mind. If you are going to buy one of these, make sure you're looking for version two. More of the companies are getting the version two because the version one does have a couple of bugs on it. And most notably the one where when the device turns itself off, it loses all of its settings. You have to go back and change all your settings back again. So that is something to consider. But again, probably my biggest con with it is the fact that there is no uh, user upgradable firmware on there. Uh, my next con is going to be that it turns off again subjective con i actually don't mind it it's not that difficult to just hit five buttons turn the device back on i like the fact that it does that you can't accidentally fire it in your pocket and let's face it how many of us put our mod down for an hour before we pick it back up so an hour is a long time but if you do put it down you just hit five clicks it comes back on and again the version twos they don't lose your settings so as soon as you hit your five clicks it comes back on you can go ahead and take a vape but again some of you may consider that a con uh, let's talk about the pros. <laughs> Everything else with the device. It is waterproof. It's crush proof. It's shock proof. You could throw it across the room. Um, it's extremely consistent. Unlike the DNA 40 chips, it's just very consistent. Every time I take a vape, I get the same vape over and over and over and over again. Um, just loving it. I'll take a vape here. Oh, turn down the airflow. I was wondering what's going on here. Yes, just always consistent, always gives you a good vape. Um, another pro, I like the way it looks. I've seen some people on some of the forums say, oh, it's too transformery. I like the way it looks. I like the silicone on it. It feels good in my hand. I feel like I can take it out. And, and you know what? If I take it to work, if I spill paint on it, I'm not worried about it. Um, next pro, 
The price, $59.99, and I have seen them as low as $50 from U.S. sellers, but $59.99 for a temperature control device is a great price. $59.99 for a 50-watt device, another great price. So for $60, and like I said, I've seen them for as low as $50, you get a really good 50-watt device, and you're adding in temperature control. And then you're adding in the fact that it's virtually indestructible, so you don't have to worry about it. So... You know, that's pretty much everything I can think of. Like I said, everything with this device, I really consider a pro. I really enjoy it, and it has become my device that I take when I'm leaving the house. If I'm going out on the house, if I'm going to work, I just take this with me because I don't have to worry about dropping it. I don't have to worry about ruining it. I, I really don't want to take my SX Mini and, you know, a $200 mod, take it out, drop it, break the screen, scratch it, any of that kind of stuff. I just grab this, take it with me, and it works as great. So... That is my video for today, guys. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully it helped you make a little bit better decision if you want to pick up one of these heat vape minis. Again, I picked it up from originvape.com. Phenomenal company, easy to deal with, answered my emails, answered my phone calls, and they shipped it out very quickly. Uh, so please do me a favor. Hit the like button down on the bottom. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And until next time... Happy vaping!